conspiracy. And what is it? And, you know, most of us know already, but if any of our young viewers are there, it's just the joining together of two or more people acting in collusion. They're working together to achieve a desired goal. We see that throughout mass media, without, you know, throughout uh, storytelling. But I do want to quote the great Alan Moore, the author of Watchmen and many other critically acclaimed graphic novels. Conspiracy theorists believe in a conspiracy because it is more comforting. The truth is far more frightening. Nobody is in control. The world is rudderless. That's a terrible Alan Moore uh, impersonation, but let's go to the panel. I totally agree with him on this because like Moore made most of his money off of conspiracy theories, most importantly Watchmen. Huge conspiracy theory, V for Vendetta, more conspiracies. Even like if you go back to his, his old comics, they're all conspiracies that are kind of made true. Yeah, and it's funny because we as creators are in the business of manipulating the audience. And like we mm -hmm. kind of play off this paranoia or this want to be smart. How many times have you watched the movie and, be, and um, you were like, I figured out who did it. I know the ending of Usual Suspects. I figured out who killed um, Laura Palmer before anyone else. It's like conspiracies always make us think. And we like the power of feeling like we're the smartest people in the room. So we now know the definition of conspiracy theory. But how does this relate to the world we're currently living in? The current climate of conspiracy. Yes. We're living in a conspiracy age. All of this that you see on the screen right now happened within the last couple of months. And I think I think we could say largely because of, of the internet, of the, the global World Wide Web has connected these probably just being pamphlets and brochures that were passed out. Before. That, that's how it was done. <laughs> A lot of people are people bored. Are bored. You have people that are socially isolated from each other. So, you know, they, they're logging on to those subreddits. They're looking at things on their feed, you know, and we've talked about how, you know, you have these filter bubbles. So you tend to see things that you already agree with on your social media feeds. There's some thought out there that uh, the 5G is, is somehow responsible for an actual virus uh, rather than replacing it. And you know, some of this stuff comes down to, to education. Just basic understanding of, of, of what a virus actually is, what it does, how it spreads. This, this is basic stuff, which if you were taught this and you're older, it's gone. You have to, we, we are, we have to keep learning. We have to keep it's, up on this. It seems, it seems as if you, if you learn the difference between like radiation uh, giving you cancer or giving you brain tumors versus a viral infection, you'll like, wait, the 5G thing doesn't hold up with basic elementary school or middle school science, I should yeah. say. To your point, a lot of people aren't educated on, on how a virus actually spreads and where it comes from and even a definition of what a virus is. I mean, I mean a lot of that, and I always tell my students this, I'm like, guys, it's not just you. There's a lot of adults that don't get it. A lot of people don't know the difference between a cold and the flu. It's like virus and bacteria are so insanely different. Their sizes are dramatically different. You know, there's a good number of scientists uh, who don't even consider viruses alive. I'm, well, I'm not a scientist, but as a teacher, I, I agree with that. It's basically DNA surrounded by a bundle of proteins and lipids that just act like this zombie robot that just all they know to do is hack into the nucleus of a cell, replace its DNA, and trick it into reproducing. It's a like, like, it's like, like, like little like Mr. Nano Smith robots. from The Matrix, which proves that we're living in the Matrix, Justin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the coronavirus sure. is nothing but Mr. Smith. Stay woke. <laughs> a lot of these things out of the shadows, pandemic, um, the Bill Gates, uh, microchipping things, these are all born on YouTube, which leads us to the whole thing of like, where are we getting this information from? They're not papers, they're not news articles, all YouTube videos made by people like you and I and um, scientists that probably have a sketchy history. Like just because someone has a PhD, doesn't mean they're not a wacko. Doesn't yeah, they mean they're smarter than like you. Candy now. And, and beyond, beyond the wacko, it's the money aspect. You know, we can't neglect that important aspect of profitability. Actually, it's, it's a really good point uh, because the pandemic and out of the shadows were like big YouTube hits that were shared on all social media platforms. And it's like, right, they're not legitimate. It's not legitimate uh, journalism of any kind, but it makes sense if you're cynical to the media, if you're cynical to government, of course you're going, ooh, someone who knows more than the government or, or someone who knows that, that someone, a whistleblower of some sort wants to share, they're going to go to YouTube and Google's going to allow it. Well, it turns out Google is not going to allow it and you can have your own conspiracy theory about that, but it's called social responsibility. If it's going to literally kill people, 
because you're not wearing a mask or not being precautious. Well, that becomes something totally different. If you want to think the moon landing is fake, great. You're not hurting anyone. But this stuff that we have, well, not the out of the shadows, but the, the medical stuff related is just like, ugh. And this is just three examples. Anything that's been published in peer-reviewed journals over and over again, like climate change, like GMOs being relatively safe, like vaccinations being relatively safe, have been turned on its head uh, through YouTube uh, being a main platform. You know what I don't like about YouTube is that they're starting to censor these videos that say, um, that, that spout these con so-called conspiracy theories. And I think when you censor people, it just basically puts coal into the damn oven and lets people, uh, people's mind uh, go even wild. If you shut down Plandemic, it gives more people um, curiosity. See? Say, oh, let me- See what they did? Yeah. Exactly. If you shut down um, climate change video, oh, see, they, they don't want you to know the truth out there. All the videos are TED Talks about it being uh, real, or they're trying to trick me into just watching somebody that's against it, saying it's a hoax. Uh, so I think YouTube and Google um, have to be more careful about censorship because we all have the freedom of speech. Yes, if it endangers a life, it's kind of a, a, a great area, but at the same time, it's not the same as shouting fire in a um, nursery. It's, it's tricky. I, I don't think any of us pretend like we have the answer. Uh, some things should be shut down perhaps, but it's like, it's, it's a tricky balance of, I don't want to say first amendment rights, though it kind of is, but I mean, it's a social media platform. You're signing up for it. Like it's not, it's a business. Uh, but I'm a first amendment guy all through and through. I think that they should be able to put things out there. No calls for violence, no, no physical threats to people. But I think that, I think that it just comes down to good education that people have to get from a young yeah. age or even get older. They have to continue to get smarter as things go on. And I think that Figuring out that a conspiracy theory is, is crap is just as enlightening as figuring out a conspiracy theory is yeah. real, you know? Yeah. So let's just take like Kyrie Irving, for instance, a basketball player. They still earth is flat. I think he's going to have a revelation when he finds out that it's, not, that it's not flat. Like, oh, man, I was wrong. But that's harder to take that you're wrong than it actually is that you're right or to keep like, digging coal into the fire of this untruth. And that's yeah. the funny part about science is so much of it is based on being wrong all the time. Talk to any scientist and that's sort of, you know, that's the drive is you failed, you were wrong. Let's continue just, you know, for truth. Yeah, that, that, that level of humility and letting go of the ego is so important in academia as a whole, not just the sciences. But yes. when you get the medical science, you have to because now you have lives at stake. Part of the problem, and this is probably a science communication problem. You know, I personally feel like the science community needs to get on the same page and perhaps use a different word than theory because most people think of theory as just like a hunch, a guess, an idea. And it's not the case. It's not the case in sciences. I, I actually disagree. I don't think we should change the, the word itself. I think what we need to work on is what we're saying is the public's understanding of what it really means. You know, so in science, a theory is based off of well-supported evidence, lots of experimentation of the you know, scientific consensus. Whereas, you know, when we're talking about conspiracy theory, these are things that don't, are not backed by evidence and that people take, you know, really true to heart and, and it takes a lot to like convince somebody out of it. With the theory, we're acknowledging, a scientific theory, we're acknowledging that as new evidence presents itself, that theory can change, you know, it's not a law. Also, when we pull up these two infographics, uh, one coming from curiosity.com and the other one coming from International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, it's worth looking at. It's, it's some of the stuff that you see in science anyway that you see in academia, academia for sure. It's like checking the source, checking the author, you know, is it a joke of some kind? Be skeptical, but not cynical. I think considering others' hypothesis is something, you know? Yeah. Like, you have to talk to other people, even if you think they're a crazy conspiracy theorist, like, there is some truth in which they're holding on to. So and being able to expand on that and have civil discourse with them about a certain situation actually would, like, help a person out more than it would just dismissing someone. Yeah, I, don't think, I think this is where you bring in like that whole idea of cancel culture. You don't just delete these people. You you have to practice engage in conversation. But the other thing too is um, it, part of scientific argumentation is is having a counter argument, responding with a counter argument. Yeah. So you have to know the other side in order to respond. Well, I'd rather would just engage in discourse, 
learn something from them. Hopefully they learn something from me. And, you know, that shifting someone's idea, changing an idea takes years to do if you can. I don't know. Like I have some people I respect who are against it. I disagree it. with that. I think that really? good facts can change someone's opinion very quickly of something because it's no longer an opinion of theirs. I think we just live in, especially with social media and, and, and the ability to just find information at the drop of a hat is that we find ourselves in these echo chambers of our same, like of our exact same people we're around. All the exact same, we, we're, we're affirming our beliefs to the point where we think it's actual truth. We're not opening ourselves up to other people's opinions or even true science out there because you believe that you know what's the best for you in this situation or what's the best for everyone else. Like you have to get out of that mindset. I wish it was that way, Justin, but it's not. People, even when you, 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 you you've seen this before, people will come with facts I'm like, oh no. It's also good to know that like people are embarrassed when they're wrong. They're completely embarrassed when they're just shown out and they're absolutely wrong. So like even one-on-one discourse, it's not about scoring the point. It's about yeah. actually giving someone the truth. It's not about make, uh, dunking on someone, not just getting the point. Like you have to understand that these people have emotions. They're invested in what they looked at. They could have looked at, they could have wasted hours looking at the conspiracy theory. And then in two seconds, you just prove them. That, that could hurt someone for real. Having your beliefs affirmed feels so good. So yeah, having by, a group your, by, by your you, peers, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. So if you're automatically right, if you're also, you should also think this: if you're always right around the people you're with, there's something up. Yeah, like you should. There should be some healthy discourse between you and your friends. That's how you. That's how like you actually bond with each other. You don't have to agree with everything. You know, Captain America, Iron Man. They don't agree on everything, but they're all there for one specific thing, mostly values. If you're interested in any of us and our work, please stay connected. Here is all of our information. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any conspiracy theories you want to talk about, drop them in the comments section. Just remember to always question and always look at multiple sides. Let us know uh, how we can make things better or whatnot, and may the full be with you all. The civil discourse. Put cheers together at the same time. Cheers! Cheers. Ooh. Oh. Thanks for watching.